Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm Rylan, and this is Annihilation, The Shimmer, a mysterious quarantined zone, and Mutant Bear Explained. Alex Garland's Annihilation is one such film that manages to keep everyone on the edge of their seats, even though one gets a fair idea of the outcome of the movie right at the beginning. The Natalie Portman star 2018 science fiction horror flick boasts a runtime of 115 minutes and is highly immersive. In spite of giving away significant details about the ending and the opening scene itself, it does not for once disperse from the tension. Based on the first novel in a series of books called the Southern Reach Trilogy by American author, editor, and literary critic Jeff Vandermeer, director and screenwriter Garland stuck to his solitary goal of keeping the audience patient while the movie gradually unfolds its mysteries. Add to this the proportionately elusive emotional reactions of a group of individuals who are all visibly suppressing their trepidations and frustrations to a point where they just can't keep a check on them anymore and end up bursting. Pretty intense, right? For a movie that is the recipient of 16 awards and 62 nominations, it does give the audience a lot to think about. So, gear yourself up for today's video, where we're going to talk about the movie, The Shimmer, The Mysterious Quarantine Zone, The Mutant Bear, and a lot more in great detail. Are you ready? Before we get into today's explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks! Now, let's begin. Annihilation 2018 The movie begins with cellular biologist and ex-military Lena held in a containment cell, being questioned by men wearing hazmat suits. They inquire about her recent expedition to an anomalous zone that is termed as the Shimmer. Lena happens to be the solitary survivor of the mission, and also seems to be a bit disoriented. While she confirms the deaths of two of her teammates, she isn't quite sure what has happened to the other two. I don't know. What about Shepard? The scene next moves to something in space, making its way into the surface of Earth and hitting a lighthouse. From here, it begins emitting a strange glow. It has been three years to this event. Lena is seen working as a professor at John Hopkins Hospital, and her research area happens to be the genetically programmed life cycle of a cell. Lena's husband, Sergeant Kane, has gone on a covert mission, and it's been over a year since he's returned. It is quite clear that Lena has still not digested the fact that her husband isn't coming back. But one day, when he does finally come back, he hardly has any memory of where he was, or how he even came home for that matter. His health condition rapidly worsens, and while Lena takes him to the hospital, their ambulances get stopped by a bunch of security forces on the way, who sedate them. Lena wakes up to find herself in one of the compounds of the Southern Reach. She meets up with psychologist Dr. Ventress, who tells her about the Shimmer and how its boundaries keep expanding. She further elucidates to her how many teams have been sent there, but the only person to have made it back alive is Kane. And now, Kane lay critically ill, dying due to multiple organ failure and massive internal bleeding. Lena, having served in the military for seven years herself, makes up her mind to know the real reason why her husband went inside. An extraterrestrial event. A higher dimension. She assists Dr. Ventress in an all-girls team expedition into the Shimmer, find its source of energy, enter the lighthouse, acquire the data, and come back. The group also comprised of paramedic Anya Thorinson, geomorphologist Cassie Shepard, as well as physicist Josie Raddick. The group heads inside the Shimmer, and Lena begins having flashbacks of a past affair that she had indulged in with a colleague. It had been four days inside, and the team wakes up a little unsettled, having no memory of setting up camp, or anything for that matter, after reaching the tree line. Any equipment that sends a signal out of the Shimmer doesn't seem to be working. I know problem with the electronics and the cameras working, but anything that sends a signal out of the Shimmer. The group continues further into the Shimmer, documenting their findings and research. Josie is lucky enough to survive an attack by a mutated albino alligator one who possessed shark-like teeth, hinting at the possibility of crossbreeding happening inside the Shimmer. The group discovers several mutated plants and animals along the way. During one of their halts at Fort Amaya, that previously used to be the headquarters of the Southern Reach, they come across names of a few soldiers from the last expedition. They also chance upon a video footage that shows 
cane, making an incision on the stomach of a fellow soldier and showing the insides moving on their own. Oh, do you see some weird shit? That, that was a trick of the light. The mutated corpse of the very same soldier is also discovered by the team later, something that makes them way too disturbed. That very night, a mutant bear rips open the fence of the base and drags away Shepard. Her mangled body is discovered by Lena the very next day. The remaining team continues with their journey, and soon comes across an abandoned house that has a number of plants, which almost look like human forms. Josie comes to the conclusion that the shimmer is a prism that refracts everything, be it light waves, radio waves, animal DNA, plant DNA, even to the extent of human DNA. Anya becomes all the more paranoid, knowing this, and also, watching her own fingerprints moving. She goes to the extent of completely losing her mind when she discovers that Kane is Lena's husband. Anya ties up the rest of the teammates, calls Lena a liar, and even accuses her of killing Shepard. You're a liar. But then, the mutated bear beguiles Anya away with a voice that sounds like Shepard crying for help. Anya runs outside, only to be attacked by the animal, and the latter comes inside the house, mimicking Shepard's voice right in front of the incapacitated girls. Anya, wounded, still manages to come back inside the house and shoot the bear. However, she meets her dreadful end at the hands of the bear, who rips apart her throat and jaw. Ventress leaves the lighthouse all by herself, does not take the remaining duo much time to comprehend that the refractions are already inside their bodies by then. With Josie wandering off and presumably altering into a human plant form, Lena makes her way to the lighthouse. That's where she finds a charred skeleton and a camera pointed directly at it. After watching the video, Lena realizes that what lies in front of her are the remains of Cain, and the person shooting the video was a clone of him, or in other words, the Cain who made it back home. Lena goes further into a hole and finds Ventress there, who becomes a glowing form of light. Upon absorbing a drop of blood from Lena's face, she becomes a humanoid figure. The entity mirrors Lena for every action and doesn't let her escape. Having no other options left, Lena gives her a phosphorus grenade, and the entity changes into her doppelganger. She activates the bomb and escapes from the lighthouse, consumed by the fire. It crawls back into the hole, igniting the entire lighthouse in the process. The shimmer fades away. The audience is then taken back to the scene that has Lena being questioned, and also recounting her experience at the shimmer. In the meantime, Kane has also regained his consciousness and is doing a lot better. Lena finally gets to see him. They embrace each other, and while they do that, both their irises shimmer. Annihilation isn't one of those linear science fiction movies that will answer all your questions. But mind you, it will make you rethink a lot of things, especially about life, about death, about what it is that holds us all together. And yes, it will give you quite a few scares as well, some of which will be everlasting, and also make you experience things you probably have never felt before. What is the Shimmer? A religious event. An extraterrestrial event. Right at the starting of the movie, we are taken to a scene that shows something in space, making its way into the surface of the Earth and crashing into a lighthouse one from where it begins emitting a mysterious glow. So, it would not be entirely wrong to say that the shimmer is more like a dome that is continually growing, and the center of it happens to be the lighthouse. Well, on the basis of this, it can be taken into consideration that the source of this unknown phenomenon is alien. But then, that is it. We don't know if it's carbon-based, we cannot really assume anything further than this, but what we do know is that it spreads and when it does, it alters the flora and fauna within it. The shimmer is a prism, but it refracts everything. The character of Josie Raddick was absolutely right in theorizing that the shimmer is a prism that refracts not only light waves, but also the DNA of plants, animals, and even humans. Now, for those of you who don't know what refraction means, it's a situation where the direction of a wave gets changed when it travels from one form to the other. Mutations inside the shimmer were subtle at first, but it started getting more and more extreme after the group made it to the lighthouse. 
there were corruptions of form, duplicates of form, and echoes that were shared amongst all the members of the group. So the albino alligator that attacked Radic only had mutated teeth. Even the human-shaped plants had mild mutations, as opposed to the bear that mutilated and killed both Shepard and Thorinson. The creature was altered to a lot more extreme level, so much so that it was almost unidentifiable. While the real form of the Shimmer has not been on display in the movie, there is a real possibility that it is more like a whirling cloud of matter, one that radiates this glowing light. On a bigger scale, we know that it expands, and whilst doing so, it mutates everything within its perimeter on a genetic level. It has a presence without any apparent will, and its mission is to spread itself across the world and adapt everything into it. Yes, the Shimmer is capable of shape-shifting, or should we say generating clones that will take over the DNA, personality, as well as the memories of the original. But now we all know that Kane, who made it back to Lena, was not the real one. The same can be said about Lena's doppelganger. It was initially a humanoid figure without any features, mirroring Lena's every action. It eventually did turn into a replica of her. What is actually scarier is the fact that these duplicates actually believe that they are who they're copying. Be it in terms of their looks or behavior, they will mirror everything. Now comes the part for what really happened inside the lighthouse. Primarily, there are three things to be explored here. The first is, what is it that really happened to Kane? Well, there's no denying the fact that he went absolutely crazy at the thought of how the Shimmer had altered him. That basically led to his death, or in other words, he committed suicide, and it was his doppelganger who came back to Lena. Although it is not entirely clear if Kane coming to grips with his clone is a fraction of him losing his mind, but we cannot deny the fact that he did view himself and his clone as two separate beings. The second thing to be explored is what exactly happened to Dr. Ventress. Coming back to the scene where Lena encounters Ventress inside the lighthouse, the latter is initially seen without her eyes, especially when she is seen talking to herself. This points to Ventress's mirror version, or a clone to be more specific, one who enlightened that the Shimmer will grow until it encompasses everything. The third thing to be explored is Lena's battle against her clone. The Shimmer, post-absorbing a drop of blood from Lena's face, becomes a humanoid figure, one which mirrors every action of Lena. The way she walks, looks, moves, lies down, sits, literally everything. It is also capable of teleporting and goes to the extent of trapping her against the lighthouse door until she passes out. It is a different thing that she is able to fool her mirror version by handing her a phosphorus grenade, activating it, and then escaping the lighthouse. The final scene has the doppelganger being consumed by fire, crawling back into the hole and igniting the source of the shimmer, thus resulting in the destruction of the shimmer. There's a bunch of interesting trivia about the Shimmer that we think is bound to catch your attention. Many of you will be quite surprised to know that Alex Garland's Annihilation is in reality heavily based on H.P. Lovecraft's 1927 sci-fi horror short story called The Color Out of Space. As far as the storyline is concerned, it centers on a small farming village that happens to be the crashing point of a meteorite, carrying an alien known as The Color one who can not only distort, but also mutate all kinds of living things around it. Sounds freakishly similar, right? <laughs> we thought you should know about it. Also, remember John Carpenter's 1982 sci-fi classic, The Thing? Well, guess it would not be wrong to state that the Shimmer does resemble this entity in terms of copying and impersonating the DNA of literally anything that comes in contact with it. It is also quite fascinating to know that the Shimmer also bears resemblance to the Flood from the Halo franchise. <laughs> Wondering how? Well, both are into integrating every living being into themselves. Mutant Bear Creature from Annihilation Explored If there's an award for a movie that showcased one of the most terrifying animal attacks in 2018, hands down, it must go to Annihilation, and full credits to the terrifying mutant bear on display here. Most definitely an American black bear, and also comparatively larger than its usual size, Lena and her team get ambushed by this mutant creature. The bear makes its first appearance during the group's halt at Fort Amaya. Tucker! 
It is quite understandable that the bear had been stalking them. The first thing that it does is rip the fence of the military base open and drag away Shepard. It isn't a pretty sight when the mutilated remains of Shepard are then discovered the very next morning by Lena. Next, the creature lures an already paranoid Anya by making sounds similar to Shepard crying out for help. Of course, Anya runs outside, only to be attacked by the animal. But this isn't even the worst part. Things turn out to be freakishly unsettling when the animal comes inside the house, starts circling around the tied up Josie, Lena, and Ventress, and then mimics Shepard's dying cries for help to provoke some kind of a reaction from the incapacitated trio. By now, the mutated bear's skull is clearly visible, even its nasal cavity for that matter. It also has a strange mix of teeth that are embedded along with a set of human teeth. Overall, it features a very sickly look. This mutated bear actually goes to the extent of further tormenting Josie by roaring and crying out, help me, just the way Shepard did, before a wounded Anya manages to shoot at it. The mutant bear ends up ripping her throat and jaw apart. As for the other members, well, they would have met the same fate had Josie not shot the bear, blowing its skull right off. <laughs> The Humanoid Doppelganger Explored Lena, in due course, finds herself a mirrored version that initially happens to be some shiny green metallic humanoid form, copying every action of hers, from the way she walks, moves, looks, etc. It imitates every move of hers. Of course, it is scary to view something like that taking place. Imagine it going to the extent of not letting her escape, and literally making her pass out, and then lying next to her in the same posture till she regains consciousness. The same thing repeats over and over again. Anyway, Lena does manage to trick the alien by handing her a phosphorus grenade, activating it, and then making a run for her life at the end of the day. But having said that, a solitary question that often comes to mind is, did Lena really manage to escape the Shimmer? What if it was not the doppelganger that died in the end? What if it turned out like how Kane's mirrored version had come back instead of the original Kane? There is a high possibility that this was a humanoid version of Lena who was being interrogated all this while, and what she told was a tall tale, one that was suitable for her kind as well as the humans. After all, the final scene of the movie does have on display her and Kane's shimmering irises. We can't ignore that, can we? We have said this before, and we're saying it again. Garland's Annihilation will not answer all of your questions, but it does make you rethink a lot of things. Even the ending for that matter. We would honestly love to know what your interpretation of this movie is, so please share it with us in the comments section below. Will there be a part two? Given the fact that the movie is based on the first novel in a series of books called the Southern Reach Trilogy by the American author, editor, and literary critic Jeff Vandermeer, there is a high chance of a part two. After all, there are still two more books in the trilogy that are available for adaptation. The second book that is entitled Authority revolves more on the organization that has been investigating the Shimmer, the Southern Reach to be precise. The main character here happens to be the replacement of Dr. Ventress, and apparently the Shimmer is still very much present there. The story also features the concept of time travel in it. But sadly, there hasn't been any news of a sequel in the making, especially after Alex Garland and Paramount officially said no to a part two. One can only hope that a new director, as well as a production company, takes charge, and they take over the ropes, and maybe some fresh faces along with the old ones to take this franchise another step further. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to send a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Have a good one, be safe, and thanks for watching. It wasn't destroying, it was changing everything. <laughs>